There's many things to consider when you're choosing the right windows and doors for your home. So whether you're renovating or building a new house, um, you know, there, there's lots of things to consider. So I'm Louise from Perway, and today we're welcoming James all the way from Adelaide. And uh, James works with our four Ocnolux Ocon in South Australia. So it's a globally recognized double and triple glazed window and doors company. So thanks very much for joining us today, James. and, and um, join us with the Perway community. So um, just first of all, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and Aquinalux. Sure. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be able to, you know, get, you know, have a bit of a chat. I, I mean, I've been working with Aquinalux for about six years or so now. Um, and the word Aquinalux actually is a derivative of a Polish net, like Polish word. So the word Okna means windows in Polish. Um, and the word lux, obviously, for luxury. So ultimately, our name means Polish luxury windows. The reason that we're in business is purely to create comfort. Um, you know, high performance windows and double glazed or triple glazed windows at a high level of comfort, right? Um, you know, is reducing noise and, you know, making it more comfortable because, you know, there's less temperature variations. And, and that's ultimately why we do what we do. Yeah. Real passion is really around education. Mm -hmm. um, and that's obviously why we're having a chat now, right? For me exactly. to be able to add some value to you and, and ultimately, you know, to, you know, people that you interact with so that you then have the opportunity when you are making decisions on windows that you can make an educated decision. Yeah, definitely. Um, informed is the best way, you know, for people to make their choices and, and to purchase. Um, obviously, when people are with us, people, um, homeowners are, are renovating, but, um, you know, whether they're renovating or building a new home and they're choosing um, windows and doors, what, you know, what things should people really take into consideration when they are, um, you know, making those choices? First thing that I would definitely recommend is to ignore the glass when it comes to the window. <clears throat> and the reason I say that is because most companies, when they're talking about windows, will literally say, get this type of glass, get this glass, get that glass. But ultimately, having conversation around glass is halfway through the conversation. Mm -hmm. The conversation needs to start at the beginning and the beginning comes down to the frame. Okay. What is the frame made of? But more than that, does the frame seal properly? Okay. Okay. Because ultimately, it all comes down to drafts, mm -hmm. right? And we could have some great performing windows. However, if they, if the window is still technically open, mm -hmm. right, when it should be closed because it doesn't seal properly, who cares what type of glass you've got in there? Yeah, it's not going to be effective then. Mm -hmm. So the conversation has to start at the beginning. And the beginning is, does the window frame seal properly? Because you could even have single glazed windows. Mm -hmm windows are sealed you're still going to get great performance from them is there specific frame types that suit specific types of um you know bills i suppose or other materials that are um surrounding that frame there's, there's multiple different frame types and ultimately all of them have great both domestic and commercial applications yeah right so it, there's really going to be conversation around not so much if one is you know is better in a specific design, but more so around is one going to be performing better and is one going to be more economical? You know, for us, for example, we have four different types of frames. Um, we have timber frames, as mentioned. We have aluminium frames, but our aluminium frames are thermally broken aluminium frames, okay. which are a little bit different. And then we have PVC frames and we have also a combination of aluminium and timber in one. And it might be easier if I show you what that looks like over here, right? So see, these are some of the frames that we have available to us. Yes. And each of them, let's assume that all of them seal properly, mm -hmm. right? Because if they do seal properly, then we can start discussing what's, and I might be able to turn myself off here so you can see a little bit better, right? We've got standard conventional aluminium frames, yes. right? We've got PVC frames, thermally broken aluminium frames, and then timber, and then a timber and an aluminium frame. Yeah. Right. And if we talk about the performance between the two, if we had all of the glass, the same specs, mm -hmm. right? If the glass was the same across all the frames, we will get a difference in performance. Yeah. The difference in performance is going to come down to specifically the frame itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we then go to it and we look at it, right? 
timber is really the, you know, it's the best performing product, mm -hmm. right? And that's where we will definitely start in relation to performance. So timber's up there, okay? Um, then PVC is a really close second, okay? From then we have thermally broken aluminium and then obviously conventional aluminium that's not thermally broken. Mm -hmm. um, and just to give a quick understanding around uh, the difference between thermally broken and non-thermally broken aluminium is that in a thermally broken aluminium frame, the inside aluminium does not come into contact with the outside aluminium. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, because aluminium is a metal, it absorbs temperature, right? Mm -hmm. If it's hot, it'll get hot. If it's cold, it will get cold. And so lots of people are like, oh yeah, buy my double glazed windows, but I'm going to put them in an aluminium frame that's not thermally broken. So all you're doing is literally allowing that frame to sit and bake in the sun mm. and just transfer the heat straight through the frame. Again, who cares what type of glass you have? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, so it's, then, yeah. it, it's sort of, it's all encompassing, right? Where we need to have a window frame that seals, but then we also need a frame type that actually performs well as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ultimately, like I said, PV, PVC is great performing, um, timber sort of a little bit better, but you have to look after timber, right? Mm -hmm. You have to look after it. Sometimes have to sing to it and oil it up, you know, just so that it, it lasts. Yeah. Um, and I will say that I'm probably the biggest fan of PVC mm -hmm. because it's great performing. Um, it's really cost effective mm -hmm. um, and there's no maintenance and we can make it look like timber yeah. or aluminium. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's a really versatile, versatile product. Um, so is one better than the other? Well, yes, because we're going to talk about the performance of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've hopefully get an understanding around which one is going to perform better. Um, but then I guess there's an element of then functionality around mm -hmm. those windows. Um, from our point of view, all of our windows will perform the same. Like they'll open the same way and close the same way. Um, so... It, to me, it more comes down to a decision around the frame type. Yeah. All right. Um, that's, that's really interesting, James. You know, just I suppose things that you wouldn't take into consideration because my, you know, like my husband, Andy's the builder and I'm not. So I would just think, oh, you know, when you're talking about windows, oh, I'll choose the double glazed and not considering those, you know, taking those other factors into consideration. So it's a it's a really good um, way to think about things. So, you know, yeah. um, as you said, then, you know, choosing the frame and making sure that that's um, the first port of call um, and then mm. glass is, is further down the line. So um, the glass then, does that incorporate then whether it's double glazed or triple glazed? Or can you talk about the benefits around that then? Think about our fridge, right? Yes. And we all know, right, we tell our kids all the time, like, close the fridge door because you're going to allow the cold air and it's going to cost us more money, mm -hmm. right? So we always make sure the window, oh, sorry, that the fridge is sealed. Right? Who cares if it's insulated, if it's not sealed properly or closed properly? So it first starts on the seals, then it starts talking about the actual insulation portions of it. And that's where the glass plays a part, right? Mm -hmm. The way you look at it is every single panel of glass that you're going to have inside of that window is just added insulation mm. into the window itself. Right? What things um, should homeowners then potentially consider when selecting windows for that comfort and enjoyment? Um, you know, obviously we've talked about mm. the frames and the seals and, and the, you know, the, the, the insulation. Um, yes. What, what's the bigger things to consider, I suppose? Right. The whole idea behind comfort and having... You know, I will say there's a difference between double glazed windows and high performance windows. Okay. A high performance window is going to be, you know, properly sealed, a frame that's, you know, properly insulated as well. And it might, you know, have double glazing or potentially triple glazing in it. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the other hand, it's just two panels of glass in a window frame. Mm -hmm. So there is to me a really big distinction between double glazing and high performance windows. The whole idea behind, you know, upgrading your windows is to me the, the most important thing. It really comes down to energy efficiency, mm -hmm. right? And the whole idea behind energy efficiency is that we use less energy in our space, okay? And let's be honest, the cost of electricity, I believe is absolutely ludicrous, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <No>. um, <laughs> it is just horrendous. <laughs> yes. 
And look, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of solar, but I do also feel like when it comes to solar, all we're doing is enabling people to not change their consumption habits, mm -hmm. but to just pay less for it, mm -hmm. right? So the idea behind having an insulated house with great performing windows is that we use less energy, right? We yeah. use our heater less. We use our air conditioner less. And as a result of that, that then reflects back onto our energy bills, Yes. right? Um, but it also comes down to the fact that when we've got high-performance windows, we can have our space quieter, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's a huge attribute when in the world that we live in right now, let's be honest, right? Who wants to listen to their neighbours have a party, right? right. Um, who or We have lots of um, like paramedics and shift workers, as clients because yes there's a legal requirement that says you can't make noise between you know 7 a.m and you know or 7 p.m and 7 a.m the next day right but there are plenty of people that sleep during that period of time yeah you're right right I or they have dogs or they have motorbikes you know our neighbors so why is it that we should not be comfortable in our own space yeah. right Right. where we have to turn the radio up or we have to turn the, the TV up just to drown out all the other noise. Also than that, because we've got extra glass panels and we've got a, a window system that's sealed properly, it's more secure as well. The noise reduction, the, the comfort to know that you're safe and secure in your home. And then obviously yeah. the, the all important one, the energy efficiency. So, um, you know, lots of things, really lots of things that people really don't consider. Like you said, um, exactly. you know, he's getting a, a renovation and wants to install um, specific windows is somebody really putting that thought into it no they're probably just thinking oh you know I wanted to you know to let I want to have a window to let this much light in or I wanted to you know suit the, the the style of my home but not actually putting the the further thought into it to to really see what the um the effects of that good choice at the beginning can have later on down the line fantastic <laughs> fantastic um words of wisdom there James um, and, and again you know as you said it's just um, you know the long-term effects it's it's not just the short term you know yes. you're getting your renovation done and um, you know this is the what we need to do now it's it's thinking about that future and future proof in your home really and and, and you exactly your, your home and for yourself as well and your family and whoever else that 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 might um, you know particularly affect so there's many varieties of windows and door openings that you can have whether yes. that's um, potentially fixed glass to sliding windows and um, bifold doors, awning windows. Um, so can you share some thoughts mm. on that and talk us through some of those, James, please? Absolutely. So um, one of the thing, I guess probably one of the most common sort of window systems and sort of door systems are sliding systems, mm -hmm. right? And this is a conversation that usually comes up um, because people love the functionality behind having a door or a window that's there that you can literally just pull across have whatever airflow you want coming through it. And it really doesn't sort of protrude into the room, right? So it's it's really user-friendly in a sense, right? But the biggest issue around sliding is again, coming back to my first point is it's really difficult to make a window or door system seal properly right. when you have one fixed panel and one sliding panel that never come into contact with each other. Um, so that's one of the really important things to consider. So there's really, there's always going to be a compromise. I will tell you there's no perfect fix. And I'm sure you would understand that, right? Whenever you're doing any renovation, whenever you're doing any build, anything, there's always an element of compromise. You will not get everything that you want. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, and so you need to be able to weigh up what is more important to you in those situations. So in saying that it's not impossible to have a sliding system that seals properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But obviously understanding that if one does seal, the engineering, the hardware that goes into it mm -hmm. is probably going to be more costly than, a, you know, one that doesn't seal, obviously. Like, I, I love a sliding system, but again, it needs to seal properly. Okay. Okay. And that's really common as well with bifolds, because mm -hmm. you can imagine with bifold doors, we've got like four, five, six, sometimes seven doors. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine, those doors need to open nicely. Mm -hmm right? But they also need to properly seal. And most of the time, people get more upset about the doors banging mm -hmm. and hitting each other than actually caring about the fact that they're drafty. 
Okay. Yeah. And so again, there's a sort of compromise because you're using it and feeling it doesn't feel right. So people will make sure they'll change the frame to make it easier to move, but therefore compromise on the seals. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it, it, like from a user-friendly point of view, I think what sells is what's user-friendly, not what's always practical. Um, if we think about an awning window, um, that's obviously a window system that will sort of push out from the bottom and, and you know, push out. So, uh, which is, I think, okay. Um, but depending on the system um, of the frame, it, 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 you know, ultimately I'm... I'm not a huge fan of them, to be honest, because to me, I, I love the ability of airflow, mm -hmm. right? And if we think about a window that sort of pushes out from the out, from, you know, from the inside out, we, any air that hits the window is just going to circulate back out. We don't actually get that much airflow. We only ever get the amount, small amount of airflow that comes in underneath the window. Okay. Yes. So airflow to me is really important, right? Um, and yes, you will get some, but you probably won't get as much as what you might if you were using a sliding system, for example. Yeah. Or um, what's becoming really popular now is what's called tilt and turn windows, um, where windows will, rather than you know pushing out from the bottom, they'll actually tilt in from the top. Okay. Yes. Right? And actually fall into well. the room a little bit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Um, and if we were to sort of compare an awning window versus a tilt window, mm -hmm. you actually get more airflow coming from a tilt window than that of an awning window, even though they open the same. Right, but it's all about science. If it's tilting in, any air that hits the window is just going to follow the wind air straight into the straight oh. into the house. I can show you some cross sections of some different systems okay. that we have available on our window system here. Right, this, the windows is, our sort of windows work as if you can imagine like an L shape. Yeah. Right, so we can see this is the frame. This will be attached into the wall, mm -hmm. and then this is obviously what holds the glass. So the window will open, but mm -hmm. it has a double seal on it. Okay. Okay. And we can obviously with the square boxes, we can see, you know, those rubber gaskets that are there because mm -hmm. important when we talk about seals is we need to make sure that those seals are rubber because if okay. they're rubber, mm -hmm. they will actually work just like the fridge does. Right. Yeah. So then over here, we have what's called an entry, obviously an entry door. Mm -hmm. And we can see that it is sealed as well. Generally, this is where we underneath the door, right. Is where we get the most amount of air leaks. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, our door works a little bit like an L shape where it come up and seal up against the bottom threshold, but also seal up on the top of it. All right. Okay. And then over here, we have a sliding door, okay. right? So it's not impossible to have a sliding system that's sealed, mm -hmm. but again, it is quite difficult to do. And in this situation, we can see we've got two seals on it. That sliding door is completely 100% sealed when it's closed. Um, another thing to point out is obviously, um, when we talk about sealing, how important it is to have like multiple points of locking. Mm -hmm. So if we look at this window over here, okay, we can see with the green dots that that is where we have all those locks. Okay. Right. And as, and as a result of that, coming back again, everything is full circle is if one of those locks is obstructed, the other locks will actually pull the window in and actually seal it off. Okay. Right. Um, because there's been plenty of times where you have, you know, a, a window that will grab somewhere, but you've got a gap up the top and you've got a gap down the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so by having multiple points of locking, it's again, going to be more secure. Right. And it's going to stop the air leaks. And as a result of stopping air leaks, it's going to stop, you know, the heating cooling cost. And as a result of that as well, it's going to reduce the noise. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, one good effect. So it, exactly right. Like it, it just, they all complement each other. Awesome. Um, and so you need to have all these things in, you know, in place in order to, at the end of the day, get a window system or a door system that's actually going to work really well for you. No, oh, great. Great, great knowledge and, and um, really valuable information there, James. Thank you. Um, I suppose um, my next <clears throat> question is, um, you know, the, the Australian standards and building codes require various glass types and different areas of your home so are you able to talk mm. to um, us about that because <clears throat> some homeowners won't don't understand that that you know you have to use particular glass on, on you know for example bathrooms as opposed to your you know your living room and, and things like that are you yes. do you have much information on that yeah the, I think the first thing we need to start is understanding what is considered safety glass mm -hmm. okay because generally in specific areas the building codes or the Australian standards come out and say, look, we need to have grade A safety glass. 
okay, in specific areas, right? And depending on where it is, it will change. But ultimately, we need to know what safety glass is. The first thing to consider is that there's ultimately, there's, there's sort of two types of safety glasses. Both of them are safety, um, but they are quite different. Okay, so the very first thing, um, and it might be easier again if I show you my screen, over here we have what's called laminated glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what laminated glass is, is two panels of glass that have actually been stuck together with a layer of plastic. Okay. Okay, now I will say that lots of people will interpret this as being double glazing, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, it is two individual panels of glass, but they're stuck together to make one panel of glass, okay? And that film in between, um, that layer of plastic is what makes it safe. Because as you can imagine, and it's probably easier to explain it in relation to a car, mm -hmm. right? Where the front windshield of your car is laminated glass. So if a rock comes up off, a, off, a, off another car, right? Hits the front windshield. Yes, the windshield will crack. But it's not going to. But it won't it won't fall out, right? And I'm sure you would have experienced it plenty of times. You're like, oh, there's a crack in the windshield and you touch it, right? And you're like, oh, I, I can't feel it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the other side and you touch it and you're like, oh, that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> because again, you've, you've broken one of those panels of glass, but not the second one. Okay. Whereas if it didn't have that plastic and a rock came up and cracked it, that crack would just fall through and you literally, you would have massive glass shards just falling straight out of the car. The other type of safety glass is what's called toughened glass. Okay. Okay. Now, this type of glass is, as the name entails, it is tougher than standard glass, right? Um, so what happens, it actually gets baked or in some situations it gets boiled. Hmm. Okay. And as a result of this process, it makes the glass now at least four times stronger than standard glass. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what that will do then is obviously it will take a lot more impact. All right. So if you can imagine being safety glass, if you come and you accidentally hit it or run into it, it's going to stay intact. Mm -hmm. Right. However, um, it's obviously not indestructible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing to consider around, around toughened glass is yes, it's stronger and it is great because it's more flexible than glass. But then if it, there's a big enough impact, it will break. Correct. Right. But it also depends on the type of impact. So I can, I can tell you that toughened glass about a meter span, right. If we have it lying down, it will flex 70 millimeters. Okay. Right. So we'll take a lot of flexing. So it's also great, I think, for really sort of security aspects, because someone can literally swing a hammer at it. Yeah. And it will literally bend and flex and absorb a lot of that pressure. Right. But yes, as I mentioned, it's not indestructible. Mm -hmm. And what happens because it's been toughened now, when it gets to that point where it can't hold its shape anymore, it will shatter into a billion pieces. Okay. Right. And you probably would have seen that on road somewhere as well from car accidents, right? Where there's just tiny, tiny pieces, billions and billions of tiny little glass pieces everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because all of the other windows in the car are toughened glass. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the front windshield is, is laminated, but the rest of them are toughened. Okay. And the idea behind making it safer mm -hmm. is that yes, it will take more impact, but on top of that, when it breaks, it will diversify and sort of spread out its surface area. Sure. Right. So yes, there's millions, millions or billions of pieces, but there's because they're so tiny. Yes, you might get cut from them, mm -hmm. but it's only really going to be a little graze. Mm -hmm. Right. So you might get lots of little little cuts. The issue really is around standard glass when it breaks we're talking about large shards of glass you don't know where it's happening and literally people like sort of impaling themselves on it and that's when you get really deep sort of really like nasty cuts whereas this is just really insignificant to an extent yes little cuts yes um and that's what then makes it safe mm -hmm. right because it's all about stopping someone from getting hurt right okay bathrooms wet areas need to have safety glass right right so 
um, which I'm, I find a little bit interesting, but it is what the code is. Like if a window is quite high, the likelihood of you hurting yourself on that window is pretty slim, mm. right? Um, but it's still what the regulation is. So we obviously will comply with that. Any windows below a specific height need to be a safety glass, yes. right? Um, any doors, for example, generally always need to be safety glass, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, you know, it will come down to, in specific areas, what type of glass you need. And when you obviously talk considering double glazing and you need safety glass, you need to understand that now you need two panels of safety glass. Yes. On the outside and on the inside. So keeping in mind, there is obviously going to be a bit more of a cost associated because a safety glass is obviously going to cost more than a standard panel of glass. Right. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today um, that you think our, um, future, our, our homeowners would like to know about? Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, we've talked a lot about the frames. We've talked a lot about different glass types as well. Um, but there is still some really key things to look at when you're considering, you know, different window companies and the value that you're going to get from them. Yes. Um, and that comes down to like special coatings on the glass that will make them more energy efficient. Okay. Um, and then also the gas that's between the panels of glass. Okay. Okay both super important when it comes to the longevity of your windows and sort of the long-term performance of your windows. Mm -hmm. um, the very first thing I will sort of talk about is probably the gas, Okay. right? Is as you can imagine, right? I'm sure you've experienced it plenty of times before. You have a cold glass of water, you pour, you know, you, you pour it into a glass and you get water condensation right on the outside of it. Yeah. Okay. Cause condensation is a huge issue when it comes to windows, right? When we've got really stark temperature variations from outside to inside. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem with condensation is that water obviously will help to grow bugs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we're seeing, you'd be surprised how often we're walking into people's homes and we're changing their windows over because most amount of condensation that you get is generally in your bedroom, mm -hmm. okay? Because while you're sleeping, you're letting off, you know, gases and you're letting off moisture in your air, you know, from your breath. And that's when we see really stark temperature variation. And as a result of water on your windows, mm -hmm. we start growing mold, right? Okay. And mold is not safe for us to be, you know, breathing. Right. And that's, it's growing in the spaces that we are sleeping. Like we're spending what, eight hours yeah. in generally our rooms minimum, mm -hmm. right? Per night. And to think that we've got literally windows that are now making us sick. Mm -hmm. Right. So really important to consider the type of gas we have between the panels of glass. Okay. Sure. Because that different gases will actually, you know, help to reduce or sometimes eliminate the risk of condensation. Okay. Okay. So what's really common, obviously, for us to get two panels of glass, sort of put them in, inside of a frame and just have standard pressurized, you know, standard air that we're breathing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's really where you're going to get probably the largest risk of condensation. Okay. But also in saying that you will risk condensation between the panels of glass, mm -hmm. right? And if you can imagine when we get condensation, it builds up enough, it will start streaking, right? And that water droplets will start running. And if it's in between the panels of glass, like you're not going to be able to clean it. No. Right? So really important to have, a glazing system that is sealed as well. So the window frame has to seal, but the glass components have to seal as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, generally, if we sort of upgrade from air, it's usually the next step up is what's called argon gas. Right. Oh. And people do freak out around argon. They're like, oh, you know, it's pressurized with a gas. Is it going to explode? <laughs> right. What happens if it escapes? Like, um, you know, is, you know, if someone breaks the window, is it going to explode on me? Whatever else. Ultimately, no to all of those things, mm -hmm. right? Um, argon is the third highest concentration of gas in our atmosphere. Yes. So we're breathing argon every breath that we take, mm -hmm. right? So no, no issues, you know, around it, you know, health implications or anything like that. Yeah. But because it's denser than air, it's what it does is obviously makes the window more energy efficient as well. Okay. Because it stops the amount of heat that comes through the window. Mm -hmm. right in the summertime the heat that transfers through the window but also in the winter time the heat escaping out the window mm -hmm. so having it pressurized with a gas will help to make it more energy efficient 
eliminate the risk of condensation, but also than that will also help towards making your windows quieter as well. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh my goodness. So much. So right. Much. Because um, if I show you this slide, sound does not travel as quick through argon as it does through air. Okay. So people are like, oh, argon slowing, you know, making my windows quiet. I was like, actually, yes, because yeah. it's denser, right? right? Uh, it will make the window quieter. The other thing, obviously talking about what's inside the glass is picking a specific coating on the glass, right? And this is something that's not spoken about very often. I will actually say this panel of glass is the best kept secret when it comes to double glazing. Okay. Right, the best kept secret. So insider trading right here is what we're talking about, it's about true, right? <laughs> um, because this panel glass is, is rarely ever specified, mm -hmm. but it makes a huge difference in the performance of the window. Right. Right. I can literally show that there are results to, you know, I, I have results to show that one single panel of this glass mm -hmm. can work better than two panels of glass in a double glaze system. Okay. So you might be thinking, you know, everyone's coming out there as window suppliers, they're going to say, yeah, buy my windows, they're double glazed, they're going to solve all your problems. And it's like, but hang on, I can get better results from one single panel of glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so why would I purchase two panels of glass if I can get better results from one, mm. right? I mean, there's other results, obviously, you won't get as much sound reduction, or whatever else, but it, I'm sort of stressing how important this one panel of glass is. Okay. Right? And there's lots of different names for it, depending on the company. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, ter you know, there's terms like comfort glass mm. or energy efficient glass, but the, ultimately the term is, is a low E glass. Low E glass. Okay. okay. Low E. Okay. Um, it stands for low emissivity. I can't say the word. So it's e <laughs> that's why most people say E, right? Let's not know it. It's too um, hard to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's just, uh, it's low E because it, it's just easy that way. It's easier yeah. to say E than emissivity. I think the word is. <laughs> okay. Um, and what it is to an extent is a film that's on the glass, mm -hmm. right? Easiest way to explain how it works is it works like tinting, okay? We all know what tinting does to glass, mm. right? It stops the amount of heat that comes through it, right? But the difference with tinting is that tinting darkens the glass, mm -hmm. right? Whereas a low E coating will like reflect a lot of that heat but it won't darken the glass. Show you sort of two panels of glass, both of them double glazed mm -hmm. and understand light obviously coming through them because light travels in three, sort of three forms. It comes in infrared. Mm -hmm. That's the heat that we get, right? Yeah. It comes in visible light. That's what we see. Mm -hmm. And it comes in UV and that's the damaging stuff, right? Yeah. That's the stuff that gives us skin cancers. That's the stuff that will, you know, you know, damage our floors, yeah. right? And the idea behind having this coating on it is that it will reflect a lot of that back out, Fine. right? But in, obviously in the other way, in the winter time, we'll reflect it back in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas, you know, just standing glass allows a lot of that to come through. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, really important that this one coating, it, like I said, one single panel of it can outperform two panels of glass in a double glaze system. Like it is super imperative to have it anyone comes to us looking for a window and you don't even ask me about these things you're going to get a window that has low e glass it's going to have argon gas it's going to be completely sealed and it's going to be well insulated mm -hmm. because that should be the standard yeah for people to right. have comfort as you've talked about before so making sure that they've got superior comfort within their home exactly right yeah. and so you know and this is why you know it's important to be able to distinguish like where's the value that you're getting mm -hmm. What value are you actually getting for the amount of money that you're putting towards it? Mm -hmm. um, now we've talked about all these things, but I do think the easiest way like for people to understand when it comes to performance is to look at a couple of values and you should be able to get these values from the window supplier. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think this is the, like, if I'm going to equip your clients or, or, you know, tell people where, how they're going to get this value, it literally comes down from a couple of figures, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm sure most people understand the difference between an R value, right? When we talk about insulation, we talk about an R value. So the higher the R value, the better performing, the better insulated that material is, right? right. Well, when it comes to windows and doors, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. It's the, the reverse of that. Okay. 
So, right? the- so rather than being our value, it's called a U value. Okay. Okay. And the idea behind the U value is that the U value measures the amount of heat that mm-hmm. transfers through the window. Okay. So theoretically, the less heat that transfers through the window, the better okay. performing that window is, mm-hmm. right? So we all want to look for really low numbers here. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, you might see some energy calculators or whatever else, and they're specifying windows with a U value of, say, four, mm-hmm. right? Because I will say it's sort of zero from in, to infinity. Okay. Not that anyone obviously is up that, up that high, but, you know, most, I guess, if you're considering most sort of single glazed windows are probably somewhere between three to six okay. on the U value scale. Um, but obviously understanding everything that the lower that it is, again, the better performing that it is. So oh, right. most sort of, and then if you consider it like most sort of double glazed windows are probably sitting around maybe a 2.5 or something like this. What about that um, window that you were, um, the, the E window that you were talking about a few minutes ago, where would that sit at? So for our, from our point of view, you know, a window that's completely sealed, a window that has argon gas in it, that's double glazed mm-hmm. and, you know, has low E glass, yeah. our, we're getting values really similar to about a 1.4. Okay, wow, very good. Okay, which are really, really high, you know, high performing windows yeah. to the point where we can actually, you know, if we were to triple glaze that, for example, mm-hmm. that will probably drop to about a 1.1, mm-hmm. uh, but we can even get results under one thing is we have plenty of energy assessors that we speak to. And energy assessors ultimately just have, you know, they have an Excel spreadsheet. They pump punch some information into it and it spits them out saying, yeah, it works or no, it doesn't, right? Um, and I have one of the calculators that some of the energy assessors use. And when I put the information of our windows in there, it actually comes up with an error code. Okay. It actually spits out and says, <laughs> windows with this performance value are unrealistic. Okay. <laughs> so definitely right? Arknelux ones. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, wow, for us to have windows that actually perform that bad, we'll probably have to break a panel of glass. Mm. Um, so it, so it's, it's, you know, and this is where most of the information is coming from. Most of the information around what you need to put into your houses comes from your energy assessor, your builder and your architect. Mm-hmm. Most of them have no idea about windows. Yeah. Right. They're, they're to the point where even us, the window supplier then to be able to, you know, cause they're the specialists, I suppose, you know. Exactly right. But I will also say that there are plenty of window supplies that don't give you low E. Mm. And there are plenty of window supplies that will say, don't buy double glazing cause it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't buy low E glass because it's not worth it. Don't put an argon gas because it's not worth it. Right. Don't buy triple glazing cause it's not worth it. <laughs> and the reason, right. Or don't buy, PVC windows because aluminium is better or don't buy aluminium because timber is better. Like everyone is going to give you every reason to only purchase what they have available. Yeah. Right. Um, Because it's easier to discredit that because you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, that's why I do what I do. Right. Mm -hmm. No, it's uh, you're you're definitely right, James. You know, it's uh, the information that you've provided today, you know, as I said, it's it's just beyond valuable because people are now um you know have this information that can really make an informed decision whenever they're approaching whatever window supplier it is mm-hmm. they they know they're equipped now with the questions to ask and and like that you know um if things aren't lining up for them then then they understand then potentially those um specific windows they don't supply them or and and it gives them then that option of going elsewhere and you know not trusting that one person um and what they say you know it's it's given that the education um, to, to assist with that, you know, so it's, um, that's fantastic. Thank you. If people obviously come to us with different budgets in mind and, um, you know, for somebody to um, really, you know, have, you know, low budget, middle range budget or high end budget, if, if um, you know, what, what could you advise the best windows, if this is even a, a, a question that can be asked, um, you know, for each of the different budget ranges? Again, it comes down to perception. Mm-hmm. And to me, I ultimately feel like if you're having to purchase windows anyway, purchase ones that are going to give you more value. 
So if we are, you know, and, and this is, I mean, budget is one thing that we can really work with. You'd be quite surprised actually how economical we can be, right? We've, I've talked about all these wonderful things. And for most people, they're like, oh, that's like the top end. And yes, it is the top end, but that doesn't always, like the price doesn't always merit that, yes. right? For us, our, our goal has always been that this is a product that is a basic necessity, mm-hmm. right? This is not a luxurious product. For us, it was always about bringing a product that is accessible to everyone because it's a basic need. Correct. Everyone has a basic need to be comfortable in their own space, mm-hmm. right? But obviously understanding that generally to have something that's a bit better does cost a little bit more, mm-hmm. right? So when it comes to budget, I would definitely be recommending PVC, mm-hmm. right? Because PVC, if we compare our different frame types, right? PVC is our most economical. And it's great performing. So that's definitely where I would start. And I will also say that there's a big distinction between a window and a door. Mm -hmm. Okay. They are two very different things. They work the same way, right? But they're functionally different, right? A door, you can walk in and out of a door, let's say potentially 100, 200 times a day. Mm -hmm right? Whereas a window, how often would you open and close a window, right? Maybe once or twice a day, maybe once or twice a week to an extent, That's it, right? So. so the engineering that has to go into both of them is very different. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm standing generally doors are much larger than windows as well. Mm-hmm. So the infrastructure to, you know, make sure that it works nicely and seals properly and everything else. So doors are always going to be more expensive, Mm -hmm. okay when it comes to windows there's plenty of things that we can do around windows we can talk about the design we can you know complement that we can you know color will also play a part in the price there's different things that we can do around that but there's there's so much flexibility Mm -hmm. that you'd be surprised how we can change a couple things to really fit within someone's budget as well keeping in mind that we're talking about a long-term investment into our homes right so Yes, there's an economic decision right now, but there's an economic decision in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time. Always get high performance windows because you'd be surprised how economical they can be. This conversation with you has been fantastic because there's so many even aspects of glass that I I didn't even know. And and, and I'm sure if that's the case, then there's plenty of homeowners aren't aware of these things to consider either, you know, and it's, um, I feel very valuable, all of the information that you've shared shared with us today, Thank James. Um, I think that it's going to really help people make inform, more better and more informed decisions about um, you know, choosing their windows, their doors and um, for, for their homes, um, whether that's during a re- you know, for a renovation or, or a new build. And it's for that forward thinking um, and you know, the potential, that the, high, the longevity of it, as opposed to just in the, in the now and um, you know, what it's going to look like and, and co- how much it's going to cost now. It's a uh, planning for your future. So, um, so look, James, thank you so much for all of that information and sharing with us today. That, um, although you're based in South Australia, um, you, know, the, you um, provide to um, the whole of Australia. So if anybody is um, you know, interested um, any of our homeowners are interested in, in your products, um, how can we get in touch with you? Uh, look, it's super easy. Uh, you can just literally jump on our website. I mean, there's contact details there. There's, you know, you can leave your details on there and get us to call you back. You can literally book an appointment with one of our guys straight off our website if you want. And even I've had a look, you know, your website's brilliant even to show the different um, types of windows and doors that we we have been talking about earlier and um, yeah. lots of product information and um so it's it's really fantastic so so listen james thanks so much for your time i really appreciate it and i'm sure um Pleasure. you know any of our homeowners that have been listening today as well will um will appreciate that valuable insight into um choosing your windows and doors so thank you very much